Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. My name is Georgia Jones, and we have a great service ahead of you. As always, it'll be a food-filled service. So grab your pen, grab your paper, whatever you need so that the seed falls on good ground. All right, side note, it was your girl Paulette D's birthday yesterday. So make sure you send her birthday wishes, birthday love. Um, and however you feel moved to, I just know how impactful she has been on my life and how grateful to God I am for her. And I'm sure many others can say the same. So let's celebrate her this weekend um, and give God the glory. Up next, we have a very special presentation for you all by my own sister, Jennifer Jones. Enjoy. needs Jesus and I'm not saying that to be facetious because it's like demons got let off leashes and won't stop to this world in pieces and won't stop to this world in pieces I got peace though that constant internal calm that only he can be still Jehovah Shalom Prince of Peace but he a beast though from devastations and tragedies, balancing mental sanity, feuding within your family, wisdom speaks of calamity. Succumbing to all this blasphemy, dying from different maladies, balancing God and mammon see, wisdom speaks of that fallacy. There's so much poverty and homelessness, hopelessness, oppression, recession, great economic and emotional depression and rape molestation the rate of suicide is super high and homicide man we kind of lucky just to be alive yet still we cry yet still we ask why yet in a time where everyone is so woke i still see slumber in our spirit eye and hoping to wake us up in a time where some people hope they don't wake up where childhood traumas have got our adult lives so messed up. Money and police got us in a chokehold under a drug dealing government. Remember when crack sold? <laughs> now they pushing needles. Government corruption walks the street more than Beatles. So government corruption got our trust kind of feeble. They make everything about division, make it people versus people. We do not wrestle flesh and blood. We wrestle in with evil. So whether you're vaxxed or unvaxxed, taxed or untaxed, black or unblack, we're all under the same attack of division from the vision of the one who is risen. He came to teach love, recruited some people to go out and be love. But how can you love your neighbor as you love yourself if you don't love yourself? The second greatest of all commandments and we don't even have the first one yet. Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. I'll rewind all your mind and all your soul and all your heart. That's the start. Above all else guard it, for all you do flows from it. Yes, I know we in this world, but please be not of it. I'm not saying don't stack your paper, I'm just saying don't love it. So many people searching for something in this world when who they need sits above it. The world needs Jesus. But in history, he has been cemented. And for that, the church should be repented. Because it seems we have just left him there. In a time that feels so grievous. Where is the church to teach us, lead us, be adhesive in this broken sphere? I think the problem is we preach about God without knowing him for ourselves. Pass down tradition and religion while leaving the word upon the shelves. Do we believe the faith we preach? Or do we just talk about it because it's a good look? Because if I'm being honest, we need to look in the mirror because to the world we look shook, in pain, unstable, misrepresenting the kingdom and the fact that he's able. And we're Cain, worrying how people see us while he's looking with disdain, crucifying him afresh when we don't edify the power in his name. To speak plain, 
There are people in the church crying, dying, lying, not tithing, being taught the power Jesus gave that they're not even applying, no praying, no hand laying, claiming to be anchored in Jesus, but in the shallow, just swaying, no accountability, occasional hostility, solely living in the flesh, no spiritual humility, all I see is heresy, no healings, faith or prophecy, Church is close for business in the middle of atrocity. It's odd to me, but obviously we're in the epidemic. No Pfizer or Moderna, but we need the Holy Spirit. I'm preaching to the choir, but they not in here to hear it. Too comfy at the crib, but they sleeping in a spirit. Shh. No praying in the heavenly tongue. No hand laying, so no healings being done. Claiming to be anchored in Jesus, but we look like we in a kiddie pool. Some adults may need to leave out of service when we send the children off to kiddie school, not being cruel. We're just not accustomed to accountability because it causes occasional hostility. Because we're solely living in the flesh, we have no spiritual humility. All I see is heresy. No healings, no faith, no prophecy. Churches seem like they've been chose to be closed. God said it before he rose. I wish someone would shut the temple doors. Then 2020 came and y'all thought it was about a virus. But I believe God was shaking and waking the church trying to open up our eyelids to shed light so Iris can see clearer than 2020 vision. God spoke this in Revelation. The churches need some revision. Our mission to make disciples of every nation was challenged when a sickness came against all people and the churches took a vacation, was challenged with poverty and homelessness, hopelessness, oppression, recession, great economic and emotional depression. I'm waiting for the church to be the church, for us not to leave the church, abandon the church, abandon the hurt, leaving the ill to fight in their own will. When we proclaim to be co-heirs with Jesus and he gave us power, told us to go heal, take mo hills and make mountains or move them with faith the size of a mustard seed, but ours must be poppy or maybe our worship is sloppy or maybe we're lukewarm, immature like a newborn or we treat our gifts and talents like they're hobbies. We cry out to God and long for his presence, but we lack obedience and we have no reverence. Therefore, we have no wisdom, which explains all the folly. We have messed up so bad with God, which is exactly why we need Jesus. Hi, my name is Althea Lou from Tampa, Florida, and the reading today is taken from Psalm 91, and I'm reading verses 14 through 16, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Because he has set his love up in me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, this scripture came out to me um, talking about God knowing my name. And I remember this morning, actually, I did say to my, my daughter, call my name, call my name. Um, Jesus loves us um, unconditionally, and we think it's always important to honor him because he knows our name. He knows who we are. He knows what we're doing even before um, we're about to do it. So we always want to call upon him because we know that he knows who we are. If we're in trouble or, you know, whatever we're going through, he's there to honor us. Uh, we honor him and um, we always want to satisfy him and show him that we love him. I now yield to Reverend Javon Lu, who will bring to us the prayer. Father, we thank you. We uh, we honor you. We bless your name. That's and and 
and we give you all the glory and all the honor. You are Abba, um, and we we blow kisses to you. We 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 long for your life in us. So, Father, we thank you for this service. Thank you for this time that we we're able to fellowship and worship your name, but also learn and be equipped by you. Lord God, we ask you to speak over us, blow on us, so we can be so we can be filled with new life and long life. Um, God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the speaker that you have empowered, that you have spoken to, that will give us new life and overflowing abundance. Um, God, you have called us to live abundantly. You call us to live with authority, with the power, with grace, with love, with wisdom. So God, we ask you to protect us as we go into this new school year. Um, God, we just ask you just to lay over us, lay over the children, lay over the schools, protect them, protect your little ones, protect your teachers, your administrative, administrative people, oh God. We ask you just to give them wisdom, give them life, um, give them a way out, give them the, the, the eyes to see what you're doing. God, we thank you, we honor, we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I turn it back over to Devil Portions Ministries. It is a special, special day approaching, and that is my wonderful mother's birthday, August 13th. We love you so much. I appreciate you so much. I do not know how I would make it on most days without speaking to you, talking to you, and getting some clarity. Um, you are my godsend. So, I love you so much. Happy birthday, Mom. Happy you birthday! Love you, love you. Happy birthday! Hallelujah! 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 
Lord, restore us. Lord, fill us. Lord, heal us. Lord, revive us. Lord, fill 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 us. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, everyone, that has helped on this morning. Set up the atmosphere for praise, for worship, tilling up the ground for the word to come. Thank you for every birthday accolades that was on last week and on this week. This is what the Lord is doing. He is healing families. He's bringing families together. Thank you so much, uh, Georgia and Jennifer. Let me tell you something, Double Portion. We have so much talent. God has blessed us with so much. Jen wrote the word, Georgia filmed it and put it put it together in that way look at what the lord has done look at what he's doing and we are the generations that are coming together and to have a mother and her son come forward with the scripture with prayer god is doing something i asked erica at the last minute if she could come on and share with us and she got the kids together impromptu god is doing something but then that raw worship from miranda curtis at a women's conference just put on the spot giving a mic in the audience and that's what came out see we have to be ready we have to stay ready if you stay ready you don't have to get ready and so when i was created to praise i was created to worship it's in me for such a time as this and it's not just for me it's for the nations back to that spoken word i asked jen for a spoken word back in april and it is just the timing of god the kairos of god that she would deliver that and have it so that we can have it as a birthday gift to me but for double portion thank you so much for that and look it opened up with communion on last week grace when we played grace grace temple and grace uh, church grace united they partake of communion every single week and you know i always say communion it's the common unity it's us coming together communion is the meal of fellowship is the meal of relationship so i want to encourage you if that's you and god is telling you to partake of communion every time you do it put him in remembrance and allow him to get the glory oh one more thank you thank you to miss juanita thank you for showering me with your love on yesterday and i just thank god for every person on double portion when god makes a way for us to get together i i just get excited and giddy and can't wait to see what god is going to do and say it goes both ways i'm ready to pour but i'm ready to receive as well when god gives us the opportunity to meet with any any one of you in any city or state because you know we're the church in the air and so i just want to thank you Javon, you touched on something in your prayer. 
praying for us going back to school. We have many that our daughter is a school teacher. We know many school teachers and, and we have uh, of our grandchildren, one will be going as a senior and one is the first year in high school and then all of them are going to school. This is a time that we need to pray for back to school. You know what? I pray for the traffic patterns that usually go interesting the first week of back to school, but we're going to decree and declare that it's going to be smooth sailing, that they've learned how to do this after all these years in the past. And so I thank you, God, for what you're doing for your people for back to school. Okay, let me take a break. Let me take a breath and pump the brakes and pause and get ready to go into the word on this morning. This was just good to me. This was, this has just been good to me. It's been, <laughs> been I have more to say, it's been better than good. It's been good, good. So I pray you're blessed. You know, there's another thing. I welcome you into my butterfly garden. Since I do balloon garlands for everyone else, who was going to do it for me? So I did it. I made myself a, I call it my, my butterfly garden. And I have on my butterfly crafted shirt that I made. And this is my butter. My theme this year, chapter 52, is all about the butterflies. But what do butterflies signify? They signify transformation. And transformation is actually maturity. So we should be maturing in some things. We should be changing. We should be transitioning. All right, ready to get into the word. Our title of the word on this morning, Our there it is a word, get your pen. I pray that you guys have gotten to the point to where you understand the significance and the importance of taking notes, but then not just taking them, but going back over them later and allowing Holy Spirit to quicken it to you direct. Understand this, it's so much um, being delivered, especially in a message like this, there's a lot of meat that's still on the bones that I'm not going to unpack for you. That's for you to take and take in the presence of the Lord. So let's get together with our scripture on today. The theme scripture, I actually put all three scriptures here. I sandwiched it. I made, I made a sandwich here with the, the title is Gaining the Abundant Life of Grace. Our title is Gaining the Abundant Life of of grace. And so the scriptures are John 10, 10. We know that when we're going to read them in a moment, I'm just sharing them with us up front. And then Philippians 1 verse 21, and then 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7 through 10. We're going to look at these three scriptures, these three key scriptures to expose how we can gain the abundant life of grace. And so John 10, 10, our first scripture, John 10, 10, it says the thief approaches with malicious intent. He's looking to steal, to slaughter, to kill and destroy. But I, this is Jesus speaking, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So Jesus came for us to have that abundant life. We must be gained over in Philippians, the apostle Paul, Paul the apostle, he says at uh, chapter one, verse 21, it says, for my life is about the anointed, about him alone. And my death, when it comes, will mean great gain for me. Mm -hmm. Great gain. My death will mean great gain for me. My life is all about him. But when I die, I'm still going to have a gain. But we're gaining abundant life. And I'm going to add while we're yet in the land of the living. But the second portion of the title, we're gaining the abundant life of grace. And so as I was looking at that for me to die is gain. And um, some versions say Holy Spirit said the, where the grace element comes from is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So we're going to read that out of the Amplified. This is all just setting us up to understand what it means to be gaining the abundant life of grace. So beginning at verse 7, uh, the apostle Paul the apostle says, And to keep me from being puffed up, from getting a big head, and being too much elated by the exceeding greatness, by the preeminence of these revelations. So Paul was saying, I, God is revealing a lot of things to me. And so what had happened was to keep me from getting a big head, there was given me a thorn, a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to rack and buffet and harass me, to keep me from being excessively exalted. Three times I asked daddy God, if he could deal with this situation, let me up out of here. Okay, I'm sorry, that was Paulette 
speaking. But three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this. And I begged that it might depart from me. See, he's saying when he said, I beg, it, it was not no little light thing. I was, I was serious. But he, daddy God said to me, my grace, my favor, my loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Remember, we're gaining the abundant life of grace. And he's saying, this is what it is. My favor, my loving kindness, my mercy. So while we're yet alive in the land of the living, you can anticipate the grace to be there for you. The favor, the loving kindness, the mercy. Why is it gonna be there? Because it's sufficient against any danger and it enables you to bear the trouble manfully for my strength. My power are made perfect. They're fulfilled, they're completed and they show themselves most effective in your weakness. Uh huh. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities. See, I'm not going to keep begging for them to go away now. Now that I understand that I'm supposed to be seeking after the abundant life of grace, when the stuff happens, I'm going to glory in it. I'm going to give all the glory to you that the strength and the power of Christ the Messiah may rest. Yes, it may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. That last verse at verse 10. So for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and I take pleasure in infirmities and insults and hardships and persecutions and perplexities and in distresses for when I am weak in human strength, then am I truly strong, I'm truly able, I'm truly powerful in divine strength. And so you do you see that we have to change our mind to, to where we understand the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy comes to bring infirmity, ins insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, and distresses. That's his job. That's what he comes for. Don't focus on that part. Focus on Jesus that came to give you life in abundance. And, and I acknowledge my weakness. It's my body, his life. I acknowledge that right now. The, the human weakness but because my spirit is created in your image i'm going to rest in my imago day in my uh, identity of who you are and you are going to get the glory out of all of this so all of that was the introduction of us putting the scriptures together and seeing what it means that we are on this morning when we're done here in a few moments we our desire was that we would see what it means to gain the abundant life of grace and so, like I said, that was all my, my introduction. Now what we're going to do is story time. You guys know I love story time and you have my sermon notes right there in your Bible. We're going to turn to Philipp Philippians chapter one. See, ver verse 21 was the key. That's why I made it in red. I was going to do just verse 21, but the more that I meditated on it, the more that, oh, the more that I did like my theme. So my theme is butterflies, but my theme is also Selah. It means pause and calmly think on that. You see that all throughout the Psalms where they say that. So as I was say lie, as I was meditating in the Philippians 121, when Holy Spirit showed me that would be my birthday gift message, it's the message of life. Now remember, I didn't celebrate my birthday until I was over 40 years old. About 40, 40 years old was when I had my first, let's celebrate Paulette's birthday. All the other times it was like, okay, it's my birthday, it's just another day. But Holy Spirit, Spirit began to have me celebrate at 40. Do you know that the number 40 is the number of testing? It's the number of probation. The children of Israel were tested for 40 days and 40 nights and 40 years. You see what I'm saying? So the number 40 is significant. And it, was, it wasn't until I was 40 that I began to walk the healing road, the healing journey to be healed, to celebrate life. And that's why. My gift to you is the fact that you can get a better understanding of gaining the abundant life of grace. So uh, we want to go back to the Philippians. Like I said, Holy Spirit gave me John 10, 10. And then he also gave me the grace part uh, that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, because we need to understand the grace that we need while we're yet alive in the land of the living with all this going on around us. You're going to need some grace, some of that 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 favor and loving kindness to go with you. God's I, I, one of the definitions that Dad Hagen said about grace is God's ability to in working through you to do what only He can do that He's called you to do in the earth realm. Something like that. That's the Paulette paraphrase of it. 
So if you will, turn to Philippians, turn to the book of Philippians chapter one. We're going to do story time and just walk back through from verse one down to about verse 25 and put this in context with a few points sprinkled in between in my butterfly garden so that you can see what it means to gain the abundant life of grace. I'm using the voice translation um, as we go through this. So at verse one, Paul and Timothy, slaves of Jesus. See, if you're going to be slaves of anybody, be slaves of Jesus, the anointed one. We greet you, our friends in Philippi. We greet you, Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, those set apart by Jesus, the anointed. And we greet the elders and the deacons who serve with you. Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace be with you from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus, the anointed one. You know, I got stuck right there like a broken record at the grace and peace piece. So my key number one that I want us to see that grace is a key element of the abundant life. If you're gonna be here in the end, you might as well live the life of grace. You know, that kind of grace, again, like he said, it's sufficient against any danger and it's going to enable you to bear any kind of trouble that comes your way. If you wanna live the abundant life, you're going to have to understand that grace is a key element of the abundant life. In the book of Philippians, Paul puts um, grace with peace. That's why I, I, I emphasize that grace and peace, grace and peace. He put them together because grace accompanies the peace that passes all understanding. As we endure whatever we're going through, as we endure whatever we encounter, whatever dramas and conflama situations and circumstances come our way, you need an understanding of grace. So when we wake up in the morning and we say, good morning, Holy Spirit, thank you for giving me the my mercies that are new every morning. And thank you for the grace and the peace that come with them so I can fulfill what I am yet alive in the land of the living to fulfill. Back to the story time, verse three of Philippians chapter one. Whenever you cross my mind, so Paul was telling the church at Philippi, Paulette is telling the church at Double Portion Kingdom Ministries that whenever you cross my mind, I thank my God for you and for the gift of knowing you. It is a gift that I get to know you. I am blessed. I, I, it, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a celebrity type person. I don't, I don't, you, I don't get awed. I've been around famous people. No, but the, just to be able to help uh, cause Christ to be birthed and formed into the lives of this group of people that he has given us the double portion kingdom ministries. I get excited anytime you cross my mind. Verse four, he says, my spirit is lightened with joy. Hello. Whenever I pray for you and I pray for you constantly. I pray for you constantly um, because you have partnered with me to spread the gospel since the first day I preached to you. I, I wrote in my notes, we need to get an agreement and partnership with the gospel, not just with the church and Big Mama and them, but who is spreading and furthering and causing the gospel, the good news of the kingdom? Who is advancing the kingdom? That's where your partnerships should be. Thank you to everyone that partners with Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. Verse six, it says, I am confident that the creator, <laughs> the one who has begun such a great work among you, he's not going to stop in mid-design. Come on. He started this thing. If we were going on on your own, go over to Philippians chapter two, around verse 13. He says that you are to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You do your part. He's doing his part. He's not going to stop in mid design, but he's going to keep perfecting you. That's the transformation. That's the butterflies. He's going to keep perfecting you until the day Jesus, the anointed, our liberating king returns to redeem the world. How long ago, Lord, as long as it takes, just make sure that you're doing your part. You need to live with a mindset that every day that you're alive in the land of the living, you are here to gain the abundant life of grace and help anybody else know about the abundant life of grace, of peace, of mercy. My God in heaven, keep reading the story. We're at verse seven. It's only right that I should feel such admiration for you all. You hold me close to your hearts. And since we're partners in this great work of grace, come on, what are we, we're, what are we partners in? A great work of grace of advancing the kingdom. 
So Paul goes on to say, you never failed to stand with me as I have defended and stood firm for the gospel, even from this prison cell. Before God, I want you to know how much I long to see you and love you and love you with the affection of the anointed one, Jesus. So he, Paul is being mushy. He's letting people know he, he's not hiding his feelings and his emotions, which are of God. Every, let everything you do be motivated by love. He's letting it be known to this church at Philippi. Thank you for helping me out, but I still, there's a great work of grace that must be done. Don't be moved by where I am. Just make sure you're doing your portion as well. Keep going. Verse nine. I love this. Paul puts one of his prayers, read it in other versions and look at this. If you say, who prayed for me? Right here, Philippians 1, verse 9 through 11 is the prayer of Paul. It says, here's what I pray for you. Father, may their love grow more and more in wisdom and in insight. Double portion, I pray that daily we are growing in wisdom and in insight. And with the wisdom and insight growth, we also need the grace that's sufficient against anything that comes at us that's coming for the growth, that's coming for the glory that we're operating in. I hear a whole nother message right there. I'm going to stay right here at verse 10 with the prayer. Uh, so, the, so he said, I may, may their love grow more and more in wisdom and insight so they will be able to examine and determine the best from everything else. Hello, your discernment is being heightened in this season as you are growing in wisdom and in insight. I decree and declare that, that you're, you will be discerning of spirits, not of people. You will discern what is of God. As he said here, you'll be able to examine and determine the best from everything else. And on the day of the anointed one, the day of his judgment, let them stand pure and blameless. See, that's what it's all about. You're going through these trials. It's a, a refiner's fire that is purifying you. So you're going to stand pure and blameless, filled with the fruit of righteousness, See, because you're seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. So you'll be filled with the fruit of righteousness that ripens through Jesus, the anointed one. You know, he's the one that gives you the abundant life. Yeah. All this I pray with a view to God's ultimate praise and glory. See, this is why we spent the last month, the last few weeks talking about the significance and the power of prayer. Number one, all of us need to be praying corporately, individually, but we also want you, what are we praying for you? These kinds of things. Prayer is a key element for us gaining the abundant life. We need to see that. That, that brings me back to point number two, something that I didn't want to to go over that growth in the work of grace. So, so back up there, the other verse, Paul said, I pray that you will grow in the work of grace. And I put that with this transformation slide. See, you need grace as you're transforming. And see, you may have thought one way in one season and now you see it a completely different way in this season. That's because in the larva stage, in the, in the cocoon and the larva stage, you completely dematerialize everything that liquefy where you were and you come out a completely different being, but it's all Christ beings, all of the stages. So we are growing in the work of grace. We are growing because we're praying that we would increase in wisdom and in insight. My God, let me keep going with the story, you guys. We're at verse 12. Thank you for riding this roller coaster with me on this morning and accepting the gift of abundant life, the abundant life of grace. Verse 12, it says, I have good news, brothers and sisters, and I want to share it. Believe it or not, my imprisonment has actually helped spread the good news to new places and populations. So Paul was in prison, but he was like, don't, don't trip on me being in prison. And let me say this, you may be in a situation that feels like you're in prison. I need to come out of the screen share for this one. I have one friend that I know is in a work environment where it feels like you're in a prison. It feels like a hostile work environment. And I understand those. I worked in one for three years here and I was like, Lord, how long? I cried three times that you had moved it. I cried more than three times, let me be honest. But the Lord said, my grace, I'm giving you grace. And so what I want us to see, know, and understand is you may be going through some life situations and circumstances, even as he said, some perplexities and hardships and insults. You may be going through some things that feel like a, a mental prison. But Jesus, the abundant life giver, came to set the captives free. 
And know this, that because you're going through what you're going through, it will cause the glory of the kingdom to be exposed in other places and other realms because it's not just about you. Sometimes God allows that to happen because he's waiting on something in your future to get in alignment and to get into position. So while he's waiting for that to get into place, he'll go ahead and perfect that, that which concerns you over here in that house, the work environment or with uh, children that's not listening to you or yeah. he doesn't send it but he will use it mm -hmm. use it to perfect you that's the romans 8 28 he doesn't send it but it will work together for the good for the glory when we give him access so let's keep with the story we're at verse 13 word is spread through the ranks of the imperial guard and to everyone else around me that i'm in prison because of my faith in the anointed one and then he goes on look at this so the imperial guard the government is getting to know about jesus because of his faith Who's knowing about Jesus because of your faith? When you go through, is you popping off like everybody else or are you keeping up right in the midst of? Keep going, verse 14. My imprisonment has instilled courage in most of our brothers and sisters. See, not all of them. Most of our brothers and sisters have courage. Some of them still not good. They still will not listen. So he's saying, I'm going through, but most of everybody that's attached to me is getting courage. So they're trusting God more and they've been more daring as they speak the good news without fear. This brings me to my next point. That's point number three, that imprisonment doesn't stop the abundant life. You may imprison my body. You may imprison me in a situation, but I can choose to operate in love. I can choose to be an epistle of light. Imprisonment does not stop the abundant life. Also, sometimes being in imprisonment, it can remove fear and it can build courage in most people. There will still be some that will not get it. We can't, we're not Jehovah. He is, but know this, you, being in a situation that doesn't feel good does not stop Jesus from delivering the abundant life to you. You just have to receive it, believe it, look to him, not them. Keep going. Verse 15 and 16, verse 15 and 16. I'm aware, I love this right here. He takes a detour and he, he kind of answering the haters, basically. He, he's answering a situation that's coming up against him. He says, I'm a, I am well aware that some people out there are preaching the message of the anointed one because of jealousies and rivalry. See, their motives are off. Their motives are, he says, their motives aren't pure. They're driven by selfish ambitions and personal agendas, hoping somehow to add to my pain here in prison. And I also know there are others who are preaching the anointed from true goodness, motivated by love. So see, the point is this, it's going forward, whether you're doing it out of jealousies and rivalries or whether you're doing it out of love, when people hear the gospel, it's the gospel that transforms people, not the people with their raggediness, but motivated by love works better because that speaks louder, that speaks longer. It goes on to say, they wish me the best because they know I'm here in prison in defense of the gospel. So the next point number four the abundant life we need to be epistles of the abundant life motivated by love despite others operating with motives of jealousy of rivalry they're operating out of fear not love that's what they're operating out of it's fear fear causes jealousy you, you're afraid that they're going to surpass you or that you're not you don't measure up and why are you measuring measure up to who be the abundant life giver that God placed in the earth realm. That's why you have to understand how to get the grace to live your life and run your race. You need the grace to run your race, not to get caught up looking at everybody else and be motivated by love. Keep going with the story. Almost done this morning. We're at verse 18. So what do you do then? Listen, listen, listen. What matters is that in every way, regardless of the motives, whether pure or shady, hello, there's shady folks, the great story of the anointed is a cause for joy. See, the, the, word, the, the word is going to do what it does despite the, 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 the messenger. Now, it lasts longer and it goes further and the impact is greater if the messenger is out of the right motive. So he goes on to say, um, with great joy of the, uh, whether pure or shady, 
The great story of the anointed is a cause for joy. I will continue to rejoice because I know that through your encouragement and prayers and through the help of the spirit of Jesus, the anointed one, I'll soon be released from this dark place. <laughs> Here's a footnote that the voice said right here in this transition. It says, even in difficult times, Paul remains faithful because he realizes that the kingdom and the message of the anointed one are more important than any one messenger. See, the king, the message of the kingdom is bigger than church. It's bigger than the pastor. It's, it's, it's bigger. And you must remain faithful. When Miranda was singing that about how God has been faithful, good Lord. Paul uses his own willingness to sacrifice himself as a model for believers to follow. Follow me as I follow Christ. He directs them to be good and faithful citizens of the heavenly kingdom, no matter what opposition they receive. See, that's because that, now you see why God had a sandwich and put the second Corinthians 12 for us to see that even when you're going through whatever opposition is coming your way, he's given you grace that's sufficient for you to bear up under whatever, whatever comes your way. Keep going. Verse 20. He says, I don't expect that dishonor and shame will plague me in any way, but I do hope that I will continue to be able to speak freely and courageously about Jesus and that now and forever, the anointed one will be glorified and placed above all else through this body of mine, whether I live or die. See, so he's even if, if it's misunderstood, my expectation is to continually represent or represent the gospel of the kingdom, no matter what. See, somebody may call it shame and dishonor. That's what you think. But honestly, it's a setup for the kingdom to go forward. Verse 21, and this was our theme scripture. And I had to read all those other verses and go all those rabbit trails for us to get back to this. For my life is, he about, the, is about the anointed and him alone. Who are you living for? Are you living for social media likes or status? Are you living to be married or for your kids? At one point I had to repent because I, I was living for my children instead of for God. And I had to repent for that. They're a gift that I was to steward and now I intercede for them. And I'm grateful to have my children as my friends. That's a wonderful thing. But God says, you can't idolize them. My life is about him and the anointed one and him alone. And my death when it comes will mean great gain for me. So if it's his will that I go on serving here, my work will be fruitful for the message. I honestly wouldn't know how or what to choose. See, Paul is thinking out loud, basically. He's saying, yeah, I, I would go, but I need to be here. I don't even know how I'm going to choose this. Keep going to the next verse. It says, I would be hard pressed to decide. I lean toward leaving this world, <laughs> getting up out of here. I lean toward leaving this world to be with the anointed one because I can only think that would be much better to stay in this body of flesh, even with all its pains and weaknesses. Where do the pain and weaknesses come from? From the buffeter that's buffeting you. Uh-huh. He's sending sicknesses and perplexities and all that coming against you, slandering your name. It's, yeah, in this body of flesh. But, but he says, it would be best that I serve the, need, the needs of the people that I was praying for about all the joy that I have going on. So verse 25, he says, now that I think about it, now that I think of it, I'm sure of this. I would prefer to remain, to share in the progress and the joy of your growing belief. That's my heart. I, that's my point number five, the number of grace. Five, it was five points this morning. The number of grace. I purposefully choose the abundant life of grace. I purposefully choose to stay in this body and live life, but I'm not going to live a life that's continually being the enemy, killing, stealing, and destroying. No, I'm going to live the abundant life no matter what manifests. What is your focus? And so, by way of review this morning, Number one, grace is a key element of the abundant life. Number two, growth in the works of grace. Number three, imprisonment doesn't stop the abundant life. It actually removes fear and builds courage to those that understand what God is doing. Number four, abundant life is to be motivated by love. And then number five, I purposefully choose the abundant life 
of grace. God, I thank you for this word on this morning. I thank you that our hearts have burned within us as you have been with us in our midst as we walk through the story time of Philippians chapter one and getting an understanding of what it means to gain the abundant life of grace. We thank you and we praise you right now. I want to pray. Maybe there's someone that's on the line or watching the playback and you don't understand this abundant life of grace. You've been seeing the killing stealing and destroying portion. And now it's time for you to have access to the portion of the abundant life giver. His name is Jesus. But guess what? I'm not going to ask you to pray a prayer of salvation. No, I'm actually just going to extend an invitation. And in this invitation, I'm extending an invitation for you to gain relationship with Jesus Christ our savior. He's the anointed one that we've been reading about in this scripture all morning. He says, my life is in the anointed one. It's for him and him alone. And for you to get to that place, not an escapism that I'm trying to escape all of the troubles in there in the world. I'm going to renew my mind so that I can understand what's going on in them. So this is what I want to do for you. I want to give you the opportunity. You know, religion calls it a prayer of salvation and many people have done that and they don't feel like anything has changed because it's not necessarily a prayer of salvation it's introducing you to your savior the lord jesus christ it's introducing you to the one who is here and wants to help you now you are to embark on the journey of gaining see if i couldn't just say the abundant life of grace it is to be gained you have to make some choices you will go through some situations just because you're accepting jesus as your savior does not mean everything is going to be a walk in the butterfly garden it doesn't but it turned it it starts the journey and it gives you access to holy spirit Holy Spirit, it gives you really, you're now accessing the usness of Genesis 1 26 that he said, let us create man in our image. And so now what's happening when they say salvation or being born again, it is your spirit man that is created in the image of God that is now being quickened and born again and brought back to life through the tree of life. His name is Jesus. This is about relationship. It's not just about principles alone. It's not about religion and rituals. It's about a relationship with the living God who now gives you access to Holy Spirit who is the active agent of the Godhead in the earth realm right now you have a helper he is here to help you strengthen you comfort you encourage you he's to be your advocate your strengthener and your standby you now have access to all of that by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and so I thank you if that's you on this morning welcome to this new life in Christ there is a video in our information about salvation that you can watch that and get some better understanding of what does it mean to be saved for real it's not about church it's about relationship many of us understood church many of us were hurt by the church maybe that's you 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 I understood that relationship stuff but them perplexities and stuff distresses have happened so much that I don't even feel I don't I can't even God I don't even hear God anymore repent that's all you have to do. God, life happened. The cares of this world got me to where I, I, I gave up on you. I did. But now I, you never gave up on me. <laughs> so I come to you this morning, God, and I thank you for being my savior. I thank you for the transformation process that you have me on. And in this process, I am gaining the abundant life of grace. I thank you for this true relationship on this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and bless God. Well, thank you so much, Double Portion, for hanging in here with me on this morning. We have a few announcements before I yield over to Pastor Don. Let me get to the announcements and we will be done on this morning. This word was good, good to me. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We want the men this Thursday, Thursday the 18th at 8 p.m., Real men pray. This is a time for the men to come together and pray like Paul was praying. <laughs> it's time for the men to come together this Thursday, August the 18th at 8 p.m. And then the following week, August the, well, the 25th 
at 7 p.m. is the generational identity where we will begin our series looking at the names of God all throughout the, the, the remainder of the year. Once a month, we'll get together and go through the names of God. When you understand his name and his character, then you can live in the Daniel 11:32 that they that know their God shall do great exploits. Thank you to everyone who has registered for the identity retreat um, that will be held on April the 21st through the 23rd, 2023 in Schulenburg, Texas at the Jordan Ranch. If you have not already registered, please do so at dpkm.ticketleap.com and we will get you more information about the retreat. Look, when you we're asking you to register, it's an FYI, there's no monies in needed. You just need to register to let us know that you're interested so we can send you all of more of the information. If you can go ahead and do that on this week, Thank you everyone for sowing into Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. You can do so by going to Cash App, a dollar sign Paulette X7. Our YouTube channel is Paulette X7, as well as email us if you want to email us regarding anything, you can email us at Paulette X7. This has been a wonderful morning. Pastor Don, I'm going to yield to you to close us out. God, get the glory in Jesus' name.